Give me them guts. Do I gotta say it again? Give me them guts. What's good, everybody? Dead Rising 2 Deluxe Remaster is right around the corner. But one thing I've been seeing people say is they're not going to buy the game because of the censorship the game has in it. One point that people who say they're not going to buy the game because of the censorship are saying is that Dead Rising 1 does not need a remake slash remaster because Dead Rising 1, the original, holds up just fine. What? Just fine. Just fine. Just fine. Come on. I don't think any of the changes they made to censorship is gonna significantly affect any of the gameplay or story at all. From what I've heard and seen, it's definitely not even enough to make me consider not getting a deluxe remaster of one of my favorite games. Furthermore, y'all, ever since I found out about Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster, I went back and I replayed Dead Rising 1, as well as I played Dead Rising 2. I haven't finished off the record yet, have to get this video out first. And for those games, I did multiple playthroughs, and I gotta say, I strongly disagree with Dead Rising 1 original holding up. Because the Survivor AI can be a complete mess a good amount of times. The Survivor AI definitely needs to be updated. But other than that, the game does hold really well. But adding some quality of life changes will definitely make an even better experience. With the Survivor AI being messy very often. In addition to there is gameplay mechanics and features that just don't work well in Dead Rising 1. But Dead Rising 2 corrects the Survivor AI and fixes these mechanics. So let me give you a background. Since I've been playing all these playthroughs of Dead Rising... One thing I like to do is to keep a lot of survivors with me at all times and to use them to help me recruit other survivors. And I even done playthroughs where I try to beat the main story by only using survivors and having them fight and only healing them. It's also very amusing just to watch your survivors fight groups of zombies and bosses. And in terms of playing the game like this, it really opened my eyes to new strategies and new ways you can just play Dead Rising. So what I'm saying is I really saw how the Survivor AI works. But now I digress. Man, let me tell you, Dead Rising 1's Survivor AI is all over the place. And I know a good amount of y'all know exactly what I'm talking about. There's times your survivors will literally just start talking in the face of danger. After being told to go move somewhere. Like how are you guys just chopping it up right now? Did y'all not see my to-go icon? One thing people say to maintain their survivors is to give them a weapon. However, if you're bringing your survivors to other quests, and you're bringing them to bosses and just all throughout the mall, it doesn't really matter if they have a weapon, because the AI is just bound to tweak out. It doesn't matter if they have a weapon if they get scared of one zombie in front of them, or refuse to use the weapon to fight. It. God, I hate Natalie so much. Come on. Is she seriously stopping? Follow me. What the fuck? Follow me. The Survivor AIs is notorious for getting stuck on things and being too stubborn to take the other way around sometimes. I think some of the craziest thing the AI does in this game is you can give it a command and the Survivor AI will completely Over ignore there. it and you give it additional commands and it'll also ignore those. God, I hate Natalie so much as a survivor. And it only gets worse. There's times where the survivor AI literally has the survivors getting punked off of one zombie. And they have a weapon and they sit there and stand in front of the zombie and scream for help. Or times where the survivor has a clear open path and they refuse to take it. And for those of you who played this game, you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. Since I've been playing these playthroughs where I try to keep the survivors with me at all times... It made me realize that your survivor AIs have hidden attributes and characteristics for survivors. Some survivors will stay close to you or they will try to. Some are quick to fight. Some are not quick to fight. Some lag behind. 
some are good with guns and for some of them that are good with guns they might not be good with a different type of firearm and some only prefer melee or bladed weapons so forth and so forth you guys get what i'm trying to say let's take lissandra for example she's loud she's bold and she's aggressive whether you give her a firearm or a melee weapon she's really about all the smoke and she's a lit survivor In contrast to Lissandra, we have Gordon here, from both Dead Rising 1 and 2, acting the same. You're a pussy! And let's take Tanya for example, who is the girlfriend of Ross. Since Ross is injured, Tanya likes to stick close to him. And when you're in a group, this affects how things are played, because if you're not carrying Ross, Tanya is going to hang out in the back with Ross. Since Ross has to walk very slow because he's injured, Tanya's gonna hang out in the back with him, and when you tell them to go places sometimes, sometimes they just don't even go. But if you carry Ross and you give Tanya a submachine gun, she is very aggressive. It's almost to the point where you can just carry Ross towards a group of zombies and Tanya will just start spraying them. Or let's take a look at two injured survivors. Even though you might think they weigh the group down because you have to go back and carry them, you actually don't. They're actually quite tanky. And for some reason, zombies don't seem to grab them often at all. They rather seem to want to smack a bitch. And these guys actually fend off for themselves really well despite them being injured and slow walking. And these guys actually contribute to group fights if they manage to be there. Even though we talk about how Dead Rising 1's survivor AI mechanics is messy, I've also mentioned that the mechanics also can be updated. For an example, in Dead Rising 1, there is a hand-holding mechanic where you can hold hands with your survivor. And when you're taking them to where you need to be, it's so janky that it always breaks and you always let go of the survivor's hand. Especially when you're in a tight space. If you touch a wall or anything becomes in between your survivor that you're holding hands with, it's gonna break. This mechanic does not have push stun on zombies or push at all. That mechanic was so not polished to the point where it didn't even return into Dead Rising 2. Dead Rising, Dead Rising 2, and Off the Record all have the piggyback mechanic for your survivors. However, Dead Rising 1 does not have push stun to survivors who are getting grabbed by a zombie. However, Dead Rising 2 and Off the Record does. And this is important because this feature difference will allow you to push zombies out of the way without having to engage in combat or to release a survivor who's getting grabbed. Such as in Dead Rising 1, if you're carrying somebody, you're going to have to put them down to release your other survivor who's getting grabbed. Carrying a survivor over the shoulder also in Dead Rising 1 does not have push stun against survivors who are getting grabbed by zombies. However, in Dead Rising 2 and off the record, it does have push stun for a survivor who is getting grabbed by a zombie. So although Dead Rising 1 does have push stun towards regular walking zombies with carrying a survivor over the shoulder or piggybacking them, you can't just continuously bulldoze through big mobs of zombies because eventually they gonna catch your ass. However, in Dead Rising 2 and off the record, you can just continuously bulldoze through big mobs of zombies. And the reason is because Dead Rising 2 and off the record have a bigger and longer hit stun animation, which also pushes that zombie into other zombies, causing them to get stunned. In Dead Rising 1, if you're carrying somebody and you pay attention to the push animation on zombies, you will see that it is nowhere near as dramatic as it is in Dead Rising 2. It's also noted that in Dead Rising 2 and off the record, if you're carrying a survivor and you run into a zombie and you push stun them, they will drop a weapon, as the carry mechanics in Dead Rising 1 will not drop the weapon. In addition to these mechanics that we're talking about, in Dead Rising 1, mechanics that should be in the game that aren't is when you're carrying a survivor in Dead Rising 1, you can't pinpoint a location to tell your survivors to go to it. You have to drop the survivor you're carrying first. But this is not an issue in Dead Rising 2 or off the record. Another huge thing I realized that Dead Rising 1 falls short of, if you're to pop a juice power like Quick Step, 
and used to carry a survivor, you're not able to use the effects of Quick Step, so you're just walking regularly. However, in Dead Rising 2 and OTR, when you drink Quick Step and you're carrying a survivor, you will continue to walk fast, and your survivors will also walk fast too. And if you're trying to do the main story and keep survivors with you in Dead Rising 1 for the whole time, there's a few missions that you have to do pretty quick, and managing a big group of survivors while trying to complete those missions in the time frame is crazy, but if you were able to apply Quick Step and it applied to them, it would be easy to complete those missions with them. There's other mechanics that Dead Rising 1 falls short of, and that is not being able to shoot and walk at the same time, which Dead Rising fixes. Dead Rising 2. And off the record, Dead Rising 1 also had me inputting dodge on accident. I can't stand that it's not binded to just a button. And for Dead Rising 1, a lot of your hand-to-hand -hand moves I just feel like are too conditional and you can't really use them and just the inputs to do them are just weird for a lot of them. But all your hand-to-hand -hand moves and to and off the record feel fine and normal. Furthermore, Dead Rising 2 Survivor AI is just a huge jump forward compared to Dead Rising 1. In Dead Rising 2 and off the record, your survivors were literally stayed by your side for the most part. And for the weird times that they did get grabbed, usually they get themselves out quick. Or even if they don't get themselves out quick and you run across the whole room and it's super far away, they will sprint back to you quick as shit. Other survivors are quick to help other survivors who are getting grabbed. The survivors in Dead Rising 2 and off the record don't get stuck on objects. They go exactly where you tell them to go with the move over there icon. And they do it urgently, nor do they panic over one zombie being in front of them, nor do they just randomly stop when you told them to go somewhere. Dead Rising 2 survivor AIs were so strong to the point and off the record they actually had to punish your survivors more. I've noticed that they get grabbed way more and when they get grabbed they lose their health way more faster than they do in base Dead Rising 2. And they seem to take way more damage, which is good because Dead Rising 2 Survivor AI is very strong. It's a little too strong if I'm being real. Playing the game and keep your survivors with me at all times has made me think of new strategies to get the group going to complete different objectives. You're going to be figuring out what type of weapon do I even give a survivor to use that they're really good with. Or you might choose to use someone who needs to be carried. Now you can push through mobs of zombies. Then that makes you think, should you lead the group of your survivors first, or should you be the one in the back and you tell them to go somewhere, so then they're in front of you, and if they get surrounded by zombies, you're actually able to push them out the way. Which is a better choice since carrying somebody that has an active hitbox, and if you choose to use arm swing, you have to wait for the input to register before you get the active hitbox. One thing that you'll have to do if you keep all these survivors is you're going to have to have a whole bunch of healing stops and carry a whole bunch of heals so you can even heal people mid-fight and post-fight and you'll be saving often. One thing I noticed is it's really good to create a death ball with your survivors, especially if you're able to put a wall behind them. They will shred through mobs of zombies, but it might take them a little bit of time. Then this lets you do the strategy of creating a death ball and leaving your group there and let's say you need to go back somewhere and go pick up an injured survivor and bring them to the other survivors. They can sit there safely. If you're going to do the main story, you're going to be leaving your survivors outside the safe room and rushing out to go back to make sure that they don't lose too much health. Keeping the survivors with me throughout the whole game and bringing them from point A to point B made me realize all these management strategies you need to maintain your survivors, which made me feel like I was playing Pikmin on the Nintendo GameCube or RTS game. That's why I really like Dead Rising because it has a lot of replay value and there's so many different ways to play the game. I thought about doing a hand-to-hand -hand combat only playthrough. Therefore, with all this said, I really believe that Dead Rising 1 absolutely needed a survivor AI update and mechanical update. It was a blast in Dead Rising 2 and off the record trying to keep survivors with you for the whole game and watching them interact with each other and figuring out strategies to maintain them throughout the whole game which I hope in Dead Rising 1 Deluxe Remaster that they interact with each other way more than they do in the previous games. 
I hope they have specific interactions to certain characters and certain items and foods. And in Dead Rising 1, keeping survivors with you throughout the whole game, it was very taxing and it just seemed like you were always given the short end of the stick. And the AI would just always tweak out some type of way. It don't matter if you give them a weapon. Because so much can go wrong and to the point where they might not even want to use their weapon and just be scared. And I will say, trying to keep survivors with you throughout the whole game of Dead Rising 1 from taking them to point A to point B is just really taxing and it's very challenging. It's easy to take them to the safe room and just give them a weapon. They might tweak out, but keeping them throughout the whole game and moving moving them throughout the whole mall constantly is a real challenge. It's fun and it feels like the apocalypse, not for me, but for the survivors and keeping them alive. But it's just too much micromanaging. So much can go wrong. But if you like this video, I'll probably be streaming Dead Rising 1. And we'll be doing different type of playthroughs and seeing what's up with the updates for this deluxe remaster. Well, until next time, y'all. Vibe out.